Okay, guys, he went on Joe Rogan, then killed somebody 38 days later by Sunny V2. Dude, this looks insane. Like, I don't even know who this guy is. Wait, I don't. When did this happen? This is crazy, though. Let's check this out. Sunny V2. Oh, wait, let me back it up. On the 1st of February 2024, Sheldon Johnson appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience. Who's Sh I don't know who Sheldon Johnson is. Who is this guy? Is he a comedian? 38 days later, he was arrested and charged with murder. It was episode 2096 with Joe Rogan, Sheldon Johnson, and another person named Josh Dubin. Josh had been on the podcast six different times before, explaining on an earlier episode that he was a lawyer who worked with wrongfully convicted felons. We're here to get the word out about wrongful convictions. In three out of six mm. of Josh's appearances, he'd bring these wrongful convicts to tell their story. He spent three decades in jail for murders that he didn't commit. So when Josh brought in Sheldon Johnson, it seemed this would be another positive episode, but it quickly became apparent that Sheldon was slightly different. I figured we'd do something a little bit different. Typically, the person sitting to my right is someone that was wrongfully convicted. Sheldon is guilty. Sheldon had what? only just been released from a 25 year prison stint, but Josh had brought him on specifically as an example of someone who'd been given an unfair amount of time, believing Sheldon never deserved his 20. Wait, so this guy actually killed somebody and this guy, he just, br <laughs> he bring him on the show? That's kind of, dude, that if I was Joe Rogan, I don't know if I would let this guy on my show. Like he's actually guilty of killing somebody. And he got 25 years in prison and this guy think he didn't get enough? 25 years in prison. Well, you can be the judge of that. Born 1975, Sheldon Johnson grew up in the Martin Luther King Jr. Towers, aka a poverty-stricken housing project in Harlem, New York City. His entire family tree had been in and out of prisons. My father was incarcerated. He did about 15 years. I was incarcerated. My grandfather was incarcerated. My great-grandfather was a slave. And my son, um, killed somebody when he was 12 years old. While Sheldon was the only one in his family who had functional hearing. My mother's deaf, my father's deaf, my sister's deaf, my aunt is deaf. I grew up in a deaf household. Therefore, his father, a drug dealer, brought Sheldon along to help him translate deals. And by the age of 12, Dude. Sheldon had joined the exact same- What? His father? What? A what? He helped him- Wait, what did he say? He helped him out on the- Same lineup. Translate deals. And or his father, a drug dealer, brought Sheldon along to help him translate deals. His guy, this kid is only like not even 12 years old and his dad's bringing him on drug deals? Are you kidding me? That's insane. What a terrible parent. And by the age of 12, Sheldon had joined the exact same line of work. I started selling drugs. Guy offered me an opportunity to be a lookout, and I would just stand there, and eventually I just slowly moved up the ranks. It turned me into, into, into this person that I was never meant to be. As a result, he began to rack up charges. Yeah. Driving without a license, standing on the corner, little small petty drug cases. And spent most of his teens in the Rikers Island prison. <laughs> Although it'd be after his release at the age of 21, that things went downhill badly. Mm. He commit two different armed robberies, receiving a sentence of 50 years in prison, which Josh argued was incredibly unfair, given only one person received minor injuries. He got hit in the head with the gun right here on the side of his head, and he had two stitches, and they gave me 25 years for that case. Did you hit him in the head? No. Regardless, prison is where Sheldon realized he had to turn his life around. It was at that moment I really said, I have to change my life. I, I just can't do this. Beginning a prison okay. journal about hope, change, and reform. In his entry letter to my younger self, it explained just because you're surrounded by violence does not mean that violence is the way to solve your problems. Sheldon, two wrongs do not make a right. Violence only begets violence. Learn how to respond and not react. In a different entry, he'd state, As we know, I'm currently in prison, which I've learned as one of two significant things to its occupants. Brings the best out of them or the worst. Mm -hmm, true. So individuals who are at their worst and I saw guys who were at their best. The guys who were at their best were guys who were involved in education, post-secondary education programs. Realizing the role model prisoners were those with an education, Sheldon spent years educating himself. I got into okay. school, I got my GED, and then I went on to obtain my bachelor's in behavioral science for Mercy. I stopped smoking weed, I stopped smoking cigarettes. I started working in the law library. I, I discovered that I had a knack for complicated things, case law, and I was actually helping guys get out of prison. 
prison. He'd further add to his journal, I have grown dramatically in these 14 years, when I could have easily withered away. I've learned that I love Shakespeare, that I love acting, that I love writing, that I enjoy reading philosophy, that I love reading criminal law, that I love writing legalese. Sheldon had changed his life to such an extent, BuzzFeed advocated for his release back in 2016. Ah, uh, don't get me started on BuzzFeed, man. Anyway, BuzzFeed aside, there's, you know that saying, right? It's like, a tiger never changes his stripes. Uh, it's really hard for people to, you know, change, dude. Yes, it's possible, but it's up to you what you think. But like I said, you know, tiger never changes his stripes. And obviously this guy didn't change his stripes either because he killed somebody 38 days later after the podcast. Like, what the fuck? He became a model inmate, said David Roth, a prison social worker. His days were so full that he went to bed exhausted and fell asleep immediately. As a result of his good behavior, Sheldon was released after 25 years of his 50 year sentence, Half? appearing on a podcast called Success After Lockdown, on which he'd implied that he'd never go back to prison. I'm reflecting, I'm saying to myself, like, yo, I can't spend the next 50 years like this. When he'd appear on Joe Rogan one month later, uh -huh. Sheldon again implied that he wouldn't go back to jail. Individuals who have been shown to acquire associate's degrees and bachelor's degrees are like 92% less likely to return back to prison. With Josh using Sheldon as an example, that change was always possible. How do you make change happen? He's living it and making it happen. Look okay. at his beautiful mind and how he articulates himself. He began working for the Queen's Defenders, helping troubled youth. I'm trying to catch these kids before they fall and I want to show them the way. And even began to consider more formal education. Sheldon asked me, should I go to law school before we came here? In the process, expressing his disbelief that he'd turned his life around. I just came from the bowels of hell. 25 years in prison, and now I'm in the sky above the clouds in the heavens, headed to a destination to talk about change and to talk about all of the things that brought me to this place today. Joe Rogan even posted a clip titled, Sentenced to 50 Years, Sheldon Johnson decided to turn his life around. However, Sheldon would make one final important claim. But this is how fast your life can change from just one simple mistake. This became reality only 38 days later. He claimed that he had turned his life around after spending most of his adult life in prison. In fact, last year, he started working for the Queen's Public Defender's Office. Well, now he is accused of killing a man and then dismembering his body. Sheldon was child- Whoa! Okay, that wasn't in the title. <laughs> so not only he didn't, it wasn't just like a kill, bro. He he freaking dismembered the guy. That's in, that's that's like, serial killer stuff that's like psycho guy stuff and that guy on the podcast that was like vouching for him he's obviously it's being so naive to think that that guy would be able to change i mean yeah he wants he wants to see the good in people but dude the guy literally fucking killed somebody that's why he was in jail and he thought 25 years or 50 years was too long people go to dude People get the death penalty for killing people in certain states, and then they get life in prison. Like, it's not long at all. Good friends with a man named Colin Small, with whom he'd also <clears throat> spent over 10 years in prison. Therefore, upon Sheldon's release, Small was helping Johnson get back on his feet. However, at some point, their friendship took a turn. On the 6th of March 2024, police received a call from a tenant who lived in New York, claiming to have heard two gunshots from Colin Small's apartment, as well as a voice begging, please don't, I have a family. Police drove over to the flat and Jesus. the door, only to find... <laughs> Sheldon Johnson inside, who claimed that Colin Small had apparently gone upstate. Well, police searched the apartment and found half of Colin Small's body, finding the other half back at Sheldon's apartment, in addition to concrete and a Tyvek suit. CCTV outside Colin's apartment showed Sheldon Johnson entering and exiting, trying to conceal his identity with a range of different disguises. In one of these stills, he's seen wearing the exact same jacket as he was oh. in a photo he took for the Queen's Defenders. 
case. Sheldon was therefore arrested and charged with Colin's murder, screaming I'm innocent as he was placed into the cop car. Sheldon maintained this innocence all the way to court. Yesterday, Sheldon Johnson pleaded not guilty to the charges. He had quite a few supporters inside the courtroom. As the comments on his episode changed overnight. Imagine being locked up for being wronged by the system for over 25 years, only to prove that the system was right. Amazing. <laughs> the judge who gave him 50 years must feel pretty smart right yeah, now. Yeah, really. I really believed I was gonna die in prison. Well, you're not wrong, buddy. Sheldon's own father stated, I'm surprised my son was arrested. I was shocked. He learned and studied in prison for 26 years. He is a good man. He was doing work in a law office. There were no problems, but I doubt nobody was as shocked as Josh Dubin. Yeah, and really. That guy was, this guy was so naive, man, to think that he was gonna change, dude. A tiger doesn't change the stripes, man. It's like, man, it's crazy. It is shocking. It must be shocking, right? To the dad, especially. Can you imagine like your son uh, just becomes a killer? One, not once, but twice. It's crazy, man. Johnson's episode stating I'm very thoughtful and who I bring on I think this was one of the best ones yet but is still yet to talk publicly since Sheldon's new allegation yeah really Joe on the other hand talked about it recently Ooh. he was guilty before and we knew he was guilty but he got 50 years <clears throat> right and then he was talking about how he turned his life around this like a month after he was on the podcast yeah. cut some dude's head off the homie didn't Jesus new HD security <laughs> cameras theorizing that prison had only made him worse was that because he spent 20 25 fucking years in jail, which is an insane amount of time to yeah. be locked up in a prison. Yeah, really. Expect to acclimate. Wow, guys. <laughs> oh my God, man. The guy not only, he just freaking dismembered the dude after. <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, I can't even think what Joe Rogan must be feeling right now to have. He had a killer, a guilty criminal killer on his podcast, and then the guy literally killed somebody else 38 days later. In like the most gruesome way. It's crazy, man. It's just a lesson to learn is be careful who you associate with, right? And I get it. Like the guy wanted to see him change. Wanted to see the good in people and it must be upsetting. But he's fucking naive. In my opinion, if you ask me. Anyway, guys, that was really cool. Uh, good video, as always, from Sunny V2. He went on Joe Rogan, then killed somebody 38 days later. Uh, yeah, make sure to go give him a like and subscribe to his channel. I'm going to give him a like here. Yeah. Very cool, guys.